Hey, now wake up the, wake up the help. <laughs> Exodus chapter 20, we started last week a, a series on the Ten Commandments, right? We're doing a four-week series on the Ten Commandments. I showed you, for those of you that weren't here, I showed you my favorite icon. I had it up here on the wall. I thought this morning I was, I was about ready to pick this up and take it back to my office and put it away. And I said, uh, no, wait a minute, we're still on the Ten Commandments, so this still needs to be here. The icon of the Holy Trinity, right? Because last week was Holy Trinity Sunday. And it's, a, and it's my favorite icon because, anybody remember? The little hole down here, the opening, right? The Holy Trinity is not complete without you being a part of it. God was created to be in relationship and calls each and every one of us into relationship with him. And that's the beauty of the Ten Commandments, or as the Israelites called them, the Ten Words. And remember last week I talked about how the, the word in Hebrew for commandment is also the same word in Hebrew for promise. So not only are they, one person reads it as a, something that I have to do, one person reads it as something that God says, this is what I'm doing for you. And we see all of these as something probably as rules that we're supposed to follow, right? Because all of them say, you shall not, or you sh or don't do this, right? How many of them say that? See, eight of them say that. Two of them are more positive slant. One of them we had this morning, one of them we'll talk about next week. But eight out of the ten commandments, and we'll get to that in just a moment, because I think there's about seven in what we read this morning. Maybe five. You notice my, my math is not very good, right? I said seven. And I'm like, are you guys awake this morning? <laughs> Eight of the commandments start with thou shalt not or don't do this, right? And two of them start with, one of them we had this morning, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And one we get next week, Honor your father and your mother, or honor your elders, right? So this morning we have what is known as the first tablet of the Ten Commandments, right? When Moses came down the mountain, he had how many stone tablets? Two. Why two? Because he couldn't carry three. <laughs> Why not one? Why didn't God just put them on both sides? Save stone. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. He had two tablets for a reason. Why two? One goes, one goes vertical. One goes horizontal. Right? It's the cross. The first tablet talks about our relationship to God, and it's vertical. The second tablet talks about our relationship to each other, and it's horizontal. So you get the cross. The first tablet is the vertical one. It's our relationship to God, right? And here we have how many commandments this morning? No, how many commandments did we get this morning? Four. I heard four. I heard three. Uh, two is, is, is right out, unless thou proceedest on to three. I got, well, I thank you, I got one person that understood that joke. There was three commandments in our numbering of the, of the Ten Commandments this morning. Some would say there's four, but there's never two, and not possibly five. There's three this morning. But let's look at this for a minute. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything. You shall not bow down and worship those idols. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. And remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's five, isn't it? How does that work to be three? Well, you see, we, we bunch some of them together. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of slavery and gave you freedom, right? It's the prequel, Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. 
that's Pastor Jerry's paraphrase. If you look it up, you'll say, Pastor Jerry doesn't actually say what you said. It said, I, I, I know that. That's my paraphrase of it. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of the land of slavery, out of the land of Egypt, and gave you, gave you freedom. So you shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or on earth beneath, or in the waters below the earth. You shall not bow down to worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. That is commandment number one. You shall have no other gods before me. My question is, how many gods do you have? And I'll remind you, you are in the sanctuary of the church. But you need to give an honest answer to this. How many gods, small g, do you have? And what are those gods? Or what could those gods be? I've said several times in sermons here, I know, show me your checkbook, and I'll tell you what you worship. Right? Because money is a god. Houses are gods. Possessions are gods. People in our lives are gods. We take it even a step further for you and, and maybe even rattle in rocks and cages. Religion can be a god. See how far I'll push the envelope this morning. <laughs> this right here can be a god. Now don't get me wrong. <laughs> We just heard a great presentation from our, from our Gideon friend over here that talked about how this book is being asked for in all, over, all over the world in different countries to help them hear what God has to say. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I wholeheartedly believe that every last one of us, I mean, how many of you have actually cracked one of these open in the past three months? I'm trying to be generous. So, okay. That's not even 10% of the people here. But when we take this and elevate it over what God is calling us to do, and there's ways to do that. You can misuse religion, and you can misuse this book, and then it becomes your God. Martin Luther said, a God means that from which we are to expect all good, and to which we are to take refuge in all distress. That now, I say, upon which you set your heart and put your trust is properly your God. This is merely a footprint, an understanding that helps us understand who God is. If you think that this is your God, you have the wrong one. This is God's blueprint to help us understand who He is and how He wants us to live in this world. This cannot be our God. God is the one who created you, who lives with in and of itself, and calls each and every one of us into a relationship with Him. It needs us to have Him first most in our lives. I know I've said this in here before. How many of you know what the Marine Code is? Not Semper Fidelius. Semper Fi. There's a three-point code that they live by. What? God country, core. God, country, core. Meaning, the first thing in my life that I have to worry about as a Marine is, is making sure that my life is right with God, which is the way that it should be regardless of, of anything else. And then they, they look at how they stand with their country, and then the Marine Corps. And then everything else is beyond that. Right? So a Christian's code or way that we should live our lives would be God. What do you think? Family? I would actually say God. It would be family and then church or community. Um, how we live for the world. If we're not centered on where God is calling us and leading us, then we're not doing what God has called us to be and to do in this place and in this time and that, to share his love with all the world. 
And these don'ts, don'ts, shall nots, we look at in the wrong way. Right? God is not telling us that we can't have other things in our lives to worship because he doesn't. He, he's telling us that because, I have to watch how I word this. He's telling us not to have other things in our lives because he wants us to focus on him. He wants us to center our lives around him because everything else is superfluous. Nothing else is going to bring us joy. Nothing else is going to bring us completion. Nothing else is going to make our lives complete if we focus our lives and worship other gods other than him. So don't have other gods. Don't make for yourself graven images. So don't wear things like this. Right? You can't see it, but I have a cross that has, has Jesus finger on it. I know you can't see it that well, but I can't see it that well from right here. So you're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to worship those things. We're not supposed to do that. And then, Jesus, and then God gives to us the second commandment. Right? I've got to think about this for a moment. Which is what? Have no other gods. Don't make idols. Don't worship them. Ours is probably different than your numbering. That's why you're over there going. <laughs> That's a problem with the Ten Commandments. They're not numbered the same, and everybody's <laughs> understanding. There's so many of them that, and the numbering is not. And see, that's the other thing that we, we get hung up on. We get hung up on the numbers. And it's not about the numbers. It's not about following the rules and doing everything right. It's about understanding who God has made us to be and how He intends for us to live. Right? The second commandment for us is do not make wrongful use of the Lord's name. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Which means what? Don't swear. That's what everybody will say. The Ten Commandments are love God, keep Him first in your life, and don't swear. Right? Is that what that means? My question is, to, in, in that sense, is why do we focus on the negative? Because that's negative, right? So that's, everybody uses this foul language. And I'm not saying that you should just go out and, like a sailor, <laughs> right? And you're not going to do that anyhow. But why do we always look at it from the negative point of view? See, here's the, here's the thing that we don't think about in this second commandment. The thing we don't think about in all of these commandments. Is, is the fact that God has given himself to us. God said, I am your God and I brought you out of the land of Egypt and I want you to worship me and me alone. And, and you know what? When you get into trouble, because I know you're going to, here's my name. Right? That's, that's actually what that second commandment says. It says, do not take the name of the Lord and, uh-oh. <laughs> The word there, Lord, is actually the name of God in the Old Testament. It is literally the, the Yahweh. The Yah, Hey, Vod, Hey, the, the, the tetragrammatron, the four letters that donated the name of God. And the Hebrews would never say it because they didn't want to possibly take it in vain. But here is God saying, here's my name. And when you have problems, I want you to call on my name. I want you to call me by name. And I'll be there to help you. I'm giving it to you so that you can use it. But when you use it, use it the right way. Right? And remember that I took a rest in all of this creation stuff. So you need to do that too. You need to step away and take some time apart. You see, God gives us these commandments not as a, as a rule list that we have to follow and we have to keep. He gives us this rule set as a way that we can model our lives and understand who God has created us and deemed us to be in the world so that we can show His love in everything that we do. Not so that we worry about everything that we've done wrong. Because you know what? Even if you didn't have this set of rules, you would still be worrying about all the things that you know you did wrong. Because we're set up and we're wired that way. God gave you these commandments so that you would understand who He is and how He loves you. And how you, He wants you to interact with Him. And by interacting with Him, how we're going to interact with everybody else around us. And in everything that we do, we can show His love to the world. As long as we look upon these commandments as what they are. Just what I told the kids when they came up here. A 
better way to understand who we are and how God expects us to live in this world? Are you going to be able to keep the Ten Commandments? Are you going to be able to keep these three that we talked about this morning? Four or three that we talked about this morning? Did I hear probably? (laughs) Maybe, maybe not. We're going to stumble, we're going to fall. But the best part of it is, is God knows that that's going to happen. And he's already waiting for us to step back to him and go, I made a mistake and I'm sorry. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to take you by the hand, he's going to lift you up and he's going to brush off your back and he's going to send you back out into the world and say, I love you just as much as I love all the rest of my creation and I need for you to go out there and tell them how much I love them. And these rules, these guidelines will help you. So use them as a, as a method to help you live a better life. Not as a set of rules that you know that you're going to break. And in doing that, I believe God is going to help you even more to show his love to all the world. So go. Know that God goes with you. And model your life after how God expects you to live. Knowing that he's always going to be there to help you. And to guide you along the way. Sing this twice. Okay.